Hi. Hi. Is it recording? It is recording. <laughs> oh my gosh, guys. Welcome to Stay Up Home. I've been recording these conversations. <laughs> okay, Michael Cohen. <laughs> so, so. Remember when he did that? <laughs> what did he say? <laughs> what did he say? He was on the news for some reason when he was still like Trump's guy. And I freak, I can't even remember what the what the what the 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 news anchor said to him, but his response was says who says who says who says yeah. who. What, what are you doing? I feel like you're doing a different thing. He was from Sky, but he's our guy now. Well, he came over. He I, crossed over. I don't know. Why I would go so far as to say he's our guy. <laughs> Anyway, welcome to Stay at Home, Kens. Yes, hi there. This your is episode 35, your pandemical podcast. Podcast. <laughs> I'm Janie. <laughs> Why are you? Haddad Tompkins. Like, I don't know who's You look like you were looking at me to prompt your name. <laughs> I'm Janie. I'm? Huh? Janie Haddad Tompkins. <laughs> That's right. I'm? Paul F. Tompkins. Paul F. Tompkins. That's right. Tompkins. He's a... Comedian. I'm a actor. <laughs> together we're married. married. We're self isolating together during a goddamn worldwide pandemic. That's right. Guess what? Coronavirus took a nap and said, Now I feel great. I'm ready to go. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. In case you're new to this, we're in America and it's just a shit show. <laughs> it's not great, guys. Um, so, you know, fun, yeah. just still trying not to get sick or get people sick. We're trying not to get sick or die trying. <laughs> God. <laughs> I am going back to work on Monday. Mm -hmm. Same show I was working on before. Yes, you had a COVID test today. Completely different type of test, completely different location. And have they uploaded your results yet to your app? You I said have, there was going to be on your app. It was not an app. It, this time uh, it was, it was a, a different portal. thing. It was yes. a portal. This time it was a portal. Portal. Guys. I assumed I signed up for text <laughs> notifications. The dishwasher is like belching behind me. I can, can you hear, hear it? it? No. You can't hear it? I okay. Hear it. Yeah. So wait, so you're going to get a text notification? We got a belching dishwasher, guys. <laughs> it's, a big, it's a big prehistoric bird. <laughs> <laughs> and it, it, it licks the dishes. It licks the dishes and afterwards. It's really it's like, cute. It's a living. <laughs> It's really cute and effective. It, it and, and, and very green. <laughs> um, so this time, a completely different thing. I went to the par parking garage. It was very all the president's men. Yeah. <laughs> went to the parking garage to get my COVID test. And <laughs> this was the first time I did the saliva test. Oh, I was going to ask you if they did the nose thing or the spit in the thing. It was thing. the spit in the thing thing. And here's, here's, the, here's what happened. Okay. So they give me, they give me the kit, you know, and they say, and I loved the way this woman was guiding me through it. It's like, okay, take that out of the box. Now you don't need that. That's trash. <laughs> <laughs> don't touch that again. She was like, like guiding me through everything. Right. Like that thing is dead to you. Like she's done like five hundred. Yes, these absolutely. Like, yeah, in a week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. She, but, but I loved that she was saying, now that that thing's out of there, you don't have to worry about that thing anymore. It's it's dead. Forget it. It never happened. So I like her. She goes, uh, you have to fill this uh, up to the black line with saliva. Ew. And so I look. It's like a lot. And if it seemed like a lot, like, wow, okay, I, I, I got to generate some spit now. And I was saying this earlier on my show with Mark. I, I was trying to, as I was trying to get some saliva going, uh -huh. the thing I... Thank God you didn't get high before. Because you'd have like cot <laughs> cotton mouth. You'd have cotton I, mouth. I thought you meant like I get fired. I no, get like, because hey, you have cotton mouth. Somehow you weirdly didn't pass a drug <laughs> test. <laughs> you, you don't have COVID, but uh, we cannot let you on the lot. Um, By the way, it's, we're in California and it's legal, guys. Right, honey. So, you know <laughs> so stop your judgment. Blaze it up, 420. <laughs> so uh, I look at this thing. I'm like, man, I got I to... Gotta, put a lot of spit into this vial and so the thing that came to mind as i was trying to like i'm, I'm like you know moving my tongue around in my mouth trying to get the yeah. spit going i thought of that thing of when you know you're going to get sick from drinking 
and then all of a sudden your mouth fills with water. Yeah, like like when I had food poisoning uh, two weeks ago. Yes, Thank yes, you yes, yes. For and it's like me. it's like to me it's that feeling of the vomit's coming. <laughs> yes, when the tide goes way, way, way out yes. because a big wave is coming. Yes, that's what it feels like. That's the worst. Yeah, feel. I know we talked about nausea last week because I did get sick. She did have nausea. Uh, and I'm fine now, guys. Um, thank God. But that feeling for uh, whom all things are possible. <laughs> nausea is it is like it's so unpleasant, and time goes so slowly when you're experiencing it. It's true. It's just so horrible. It's true. So I feel for anyone that has certain illnesses that sort of bring that to the yes. table because it's difficult. It is difficult. Yeah. Speaking of difficult. Yeah. Me trying to get spit into this vial. Okay. Keep going. I didn't realize. I th- so I- <laughs> you thought that was the end? I did. So I thought it was hard. <laughs> and then I came home. <laughs> what? I thought the whole you, point was I the feel nausea like, thing. I feel like. I thought like it was the nausea. You secretly think I don't tell good stories. No! Because you don't know when they're over. <laughs> The you, point was the nausea thing. No, 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 no. You said that you told that to Mark. That or was something. just a step upon the way. Okay, I'm. I'm not. There's no judgment. <laughs> Whatever you're feeling, you're putting upon yourself. I am. Damn. Not, I'm not. I'm not putting anything out there. You. T- you're saying I'm projecting. You turn that around on me. Is it projecting or is it? Like subject. Who, who cares? It's subjecting. Like, <laughs> you're subjecting. What is it when That's you're sucking? That's pure subjection. I guess it is projecting or when something. When you're sucking. <laughs> you're sucking the... What is it when you suck? <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't know. So, oh. uh, <laughs> so... Okay. I am trying to put spit in this thing. And it feels <laughs> very... Like, it feels like it's just foam, right? And I'm like, I'm not giving, I'm sorry, but I'm, I feel like I'm not giving actual saliva. This is bad. And I'm looking at the thing. You're dehydrated. I'm looking at, well. That's what I'm thinking. um, That's what I was thinking too. I was like, oh, because I, I I guess it's too close to when I had coffee this morning. Uh I don't know. (laughs) And, and so I'm looking at this thing and I, I finally have to say to the lady, I'm sorry. I, I, I don't think I'm getting like real good spit. Because it's not even hitting the bottom. And she goes, no, 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 that's not the bottom. It's It doesn't start from the bottom of the vial. It starts like in the middle. And then you what? just have to get up the black line. You did it. Wait. There's like a false bottom to this vial that you think you have to, you have to get the spit to oh. the bottom up to this black line. But there's like a sticker over it. So you can't see that's not the actual bottom. So basically, you don't, they only need a little bit of spit. Yeah. Yeah, 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 you don't need to hawk up a loogie or whatever. <laughs> I thought I was going to be there all day. <laughs> now let me ask. Let me ask you this because this is mm-hmm. this is a okay. <laughs> people are two camps on this. Oh, are they? If you have to throw up, do you? Are you able to say, I, I like if it's from drinking, if it's from whatever. I, I'm able to induce my own vomiting to do this and get it over with Mm -hmm. or are you like me and you fight it tooth and nail um so i'm kind of like if we're talking about drinking versus let's talk about let's restrict it to drink okay because if it's if i'm alcohol sick (laughs) and uh i have to get it out Mm -hmm. of me like i have to be like like if I'm like on the floor of the bathroom with my cheek against the porcelain, mm. just like this isn't good. Like I know that the sooner that <laughs> this is such a sordid conversation. No, the sooner that yes. I like the sooner it happens, the better I'll be because obviously I've poisoned myself, mm-hmm. right? It's like, you know, if you've been poisoned, you need to get the offense this is the conventional wisdom. Yeah. If you've been poisoned, you have to get the so poison. So I've been in a situation in my youth. This isn't something I do anymore in my adulthood, I guess. <laughs> um, so much. It hasn't really happened in a long time. <laughs> Thank God. I'm not. I like I've learned, you know, moderation or whatever. Yes. But like uh, I would get sick pretty frequently. From alcohol. Oh, me too. 
Like I just was like I didn't know what I was doing. You, I, when I was in my twenties, it was like sneezing to me. <laughs> Well, when you and I first started dating and I was in my 30s, um, just like, you know, six years ago, um, <laughs> um, I would uh, like frequently o- over imbibe. Well, then, every once in a while. It was not frequent. That one time... For JK's birthday when we took the that pub cross. Well, that was an all day. That was ridiculous. <laughs> okay, y'all. Okay, y'all. Tell me, <laughs> tell me what, tell me about, tell me if this is terrible. So our friend was turning 40 and Rollin <laughs> rented this limo. This is so bad. We have a friend named Rollin. Sorry. <laughs> Rollin's my good buddy. So Rollin rented this limo. He's he's kind of, um, how do you describe Rollin? He's kind of extravagant a little. Like he likes to live. He's, he's a bon vivant. Yeah. He's he has a lover live... of Los Angeles. Oh, yeah. He's from L.A. And these two things came together that night. Yes. And so he rented this limo and was like, we're going to go on this pub crawl in the valley, in the San Fernando Valley to all of these like really old school, just hole in the wall. Valley bars. Valley bars that only he knew about. And it's not just a limo. In our group. It is a stretch Hummer. Oh, what? It was? Yes. How? There were a million people in that thing. (laughs) There were. There were. But I there just, was a ton of people in that thing. I just remember there were like party lights and stuff. So okay, so <laughs> okay, so um, I'm thinking because these are like my fancy grown up friends with jobs. Like I'm like, you know, I'm like, oh, surely we're beginning the night at like with a reservation at like. <laughs> A steakhouse or something. Like you I, were very convinced of this. I was so convinced <laughs> that this was going to happen that I was like, no, no. Because we had to be there at like five or six. I mean, it was like early. It wasn't like, well, yeah, I'm going to make a grilled cheese and stuff before I leave the house. That's not how. <laughs> you know, like it was like, okay. So. Yes, that's true. It was early enough that we thought, okay, there'll be, there will be a food portion of the evening. This well, is not just going to be. Birthday. This is not going to be. Hey, it's daylight. Wasn't it his fortieth birthday? I believe so. Yeah. We, it never occurred to us like this is zero but drinking. Yeah, and everyone had jobs, and I was like, <laughs> I was like, we're all gonna like you know go and put down our credit card or whatever, and so and we get to Rollins' apartment, and Jessica, his girlfriend at the time, shows up, and they're still together. I just say girlfriend at the time because they're like partner i mean their fiance you know whatever yes. so anyway so she comes in <laughs> and she like brought like a bottle of i want to say it was like tequila or vodka or something i think it was like a fancy, fancy. vodka yeah and she was like hey we're going to do a shot to start off the thing now i'm still thinking we're going to like a sit down dinner mm-hmm. And I'm like, fine. So I, you know, do this, do this with people. <laughs> and then we get in this, this stretch thing or whatever. And we go to, I don't know. It's still daylight. We go to the yeah. bar. Go to bar number one. Bar, yeah. And I'm like, okay, this is going on. And none of these bars, these dive bars, none of them serve anything other than alcohol. No. Maybe Period. maybe peanuts if you're lucky. No, yeah. I mean, like, there's no, like, I'm going to have some chicken tenders or, like, mozzarella sticks. Mm-hmm. That is not yeah. where we were going. Like, we were literally going to places where people left their assisted living homes <laughs> and <laughs> parked themselves. They got a furlough. <laughs> you know, <laughs> before they went back, yeah. you know. Uh, <laughs> I haven't missed a Friday night at this bar in 40 years, and I don't intend to saw now. So then we start going to these various places, and he's got it, like, mapped out. Oh, yeah. There was there was a, 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 a thoughtful itinerary. 
I am so drunk at this night, y'all. I mean, I'm so <laughs> very, very badly drunk at this night. Mm-hmm. And I keep thinking, surely we're going to hit <laughs> some establishment <laughs> where food is available. <laughs> and, man, it never happened. And then, wait, there was, okay. So then we get to That's one right. bar later in the scenario. I want to say this is like two thirds of the way through. This is, it's finally dark at this point. Yeah. In more <laughs> ways than one. And I turn around and like a couple people are missing from the group. But I'm so loaded. I don't know what's happening. <laughs> And they come back and they're like, oh, that food was terrible. And I'm like, wait a minute. What? You had food? And they're like, yeah, we got some terrible Chinese food next door that we just like wolfed down. And I was like, well, I, you know, and they're like, we're getting in the limo. Come on. Next destination. And I'm like, wait a minute. You know, and then they're like, no, Jeannie, consider yourself lucky. It was so bad. And, like, at this point, like, it's my lifeline. Like, I'm thinking, like, this is a necessary, like, I need to have this food, but it's being deprived of me. Can I tell you my <laughs> memory of this moment? Yeah. I was one of the people. You, yeah, you did. You bailed. We brought the Chinese food into the bar. We didn't eat the Chinese food at the Chinese restaurant. We brought the Chinese food into the bar. We got it to go. I don't understand how that bar. happened because I would have, like, needed some of it uh, you I, now look i'm gonna say you definitely needed some of it whether you accept it or not is a different matter i don't know what was happening you may have tried it and said oh this is gross i don't like it no i don't think i had a bite of of solid food <laughs> i don't think i had a bite of solid food I, here's what I, what i remember is that chinese food was <laughs> mecca money from heaven <laughs> I was so glad. Oh, it was good. You, you got saved. It was fine. It was fine. It was like better than Panda Express. You know what I mean? It was fine. It was like, it, it but it was necessary. Sure. It was needed. <laughs> yes. I was so grateful for it. So I don't know. We ended up at some place. There was a jukebox, I remember. Mm-hmm. Somehow, Genji Cohen was part of the group at the end. She was there for a good long stretch. I, I think most people were there from the beginning of the it end. Some like, people bailed towards the end, but there is a group photo, and I'll I'll find this photo and I'll put it on the a, thing. Wait, was there a karaoke situation? It ended. Oh my at, god! It I ended don't at karaoke. That. It ended at <laughs> Dimples. I did not want to be part of that final step. The right. the Dimples. But right. I'm always the person that's like, we need to end the night here because mm-hmm. I know this is like the sweet moment yeah. like once we go to the next once we go to this next thing it's not good baby you were in it for the long haul because well, you were in that i picture. didn't have any way i was like this is pre-uber this is pre-uber. we could have called a cab though because some people did some people called cabs <laughs> and got out of there all i know is like we went back to your apartment i totally <laughs> passed out not passed out like you know what i mean like i yeah i collapsed in the bed and a couple hours later the alcohol sickness settled in. <laughs> I was like pretty, pretty wrung out. Oh, and the next day was you like. You were rode hard and put away <laughs> wet. I was rode hard and put away <laughs> wet. And then, and then the next day we had that. We, was it like Memorial Day? We, when is Jake? It was, yes, because his birthday's in May. The next day was Memorial Day Sunday or whatever. And we were going to our friends, this couple, this friend of ours, and to play games. To like hang out. Yeah, like to hang out and have like an early dinner and like we sort of it was like sort of a barbecue kind of situation. I can't. I, I can't. There remember. might have been hot dogs and hamburgers. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but it was just two couples. It was just yeah. us, and I was so hungover. All I could drink was Coke and eat. We were both hungover. And then and we played Trivial, we played Pursuit. Trivial <laughs> Pursuit. And then Paul, like, first of all, Paul, like, is really good at Trivial Pursuit. And um, we were on, like, the two couples split. Like, I was teamed with Ken, and, and, and then y'all teamed. And then... I teamed with Holly. Holly. And, like, they're, like, so smart, right? And then... And I'm, like, so... Such disdain. I'm just, like, a dish rag at this point. And they basically, like, every question, like, me and Ken were just, like, I don't know. Is it... Is the answer, like, Bolivia? 
or you know like we were just like fumbling through it and every single time we guessed it was the right yeah. answer and paul was like steaming like at well, our stupidity what no was no i wasn't seething no i wasn't because here's what was happening <laughs> oh yeah i remember this now you guys would get a get a question and you would say i don't know is it bolivia and then the other person would say yeah that sounds right <laughs> and then <laughs> and then it would be right and then every question that we got Holly and I had like a 10 minute discussion about <laughs> it where we talked ourselves out of the correct answer. Yeah. Yeah. It was ridiculous. Because they were too cerebral, y'all. They were too cerebral. <laughs> anyway, my point is I that may have been a night where I had to facilitate some yeah. ejecting of the poison. <laughs> sure. But we got through it. We don't we're not like that anymore. That's an irresponsible way to be and I don't condone that, that behavior. That seems like a, that is literally a lifetime ago. I'm not trying to like I think it's bad. I'm not saying No, anyone, it's not. Everyone out there should not be living that way. It's not healthy. It's not. And listen, if you're at that stage of life where you're doing that now, now is the time to start thinking about tapering off from that <laughs> <laughs> and settling into a different reality. Yeah, that's true. You can still have fun. We're here to tell you you can still have a good time. Like, th- like this was so long ago. I think we had um, flip phones on that trip, on that night. Well, all my pictures were razor. taken with an actual camera, with a digital yeah, camera. Yeah, you had your digital camera all the time at that time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. 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 Um, I might have my Razor. Remember when I had my Motorola uh, Razor? You had the Motorola. I, we I both loved, loved that it. phone. I that was a great the phone. the Motorola Razor. It was beautiful. It was a great phone. It was sle- The design of it was beautiful. <laughs> yeah. It was sleek. It was elegant. Yes. Oh. Yes. Motorola yes. Razor, I love you. Yes. And then I eventually, I did migrate to a BlackBerry because I did very much enjoy did I. handling email and text. I had the email. Remember that? I think I had the Pearl, too. It was the little phone. The littlest phone. Yeah, because remember there was a big push. Because, like, BlackBerry at first was just for, like, corporate people. Yeah. And then they realized, wait a minute, there are people out there that want to handle email stuff mm-hmm. on the go that are not necessarily corporate. They're creatives or, mm-hmm. or, you know, freelancers or maybe, you know, whatever. And then they redesigned the BlackBerry to become like more widespread. Yeah. Yeah. And so had that little trackball. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it was good. Anyway, that's us y'all. We were idiots. Remember Obama still had a BlackBerry and he didn't want to get rid of it? <laughs> oh yeah, that was a big deal, remember? <laughs> that he didn't want to get rid of. It. Yeah. I'm going to read his memoir. It comes out in the a first president days. with a cell phone. I can't wait to read his memoir. It's getting like rave reviews. How many memoirs is this guy going to make? Uh, I read the he, other one. No, but this one goes into his presidency. Yes, of course it does, honey. Yeah. I understand that. God. <laughs> God. Uh. I can't wait for that neolib bullshit. <laughs> I'm just going to throw it into the fireplace after. <laughs> What? Fireplace must be nice. Who do I sound like? <laughs> Twitter? Twitter, yeah. Yeah. I'm going as Twitter for the new year. I do a little costume. I'm going as Twitter for the new year. I do a little costume on New Year's. People don't. Look, people don't. You don't understand. We're different. We don't do <laughs> costumes on Halloween. We do it on the new We're year. We're stuck at home for the holidays as many people. Okay, so basically it's holiday season. The coronavirus pandemic has you know taken off in a big way in a big way it's gone (laughs) viral as they say (laughs) by the Uh, way that is like how bad is that joke COVID-19 has gone viral wait when I was telling when I was joking with you I think I said this on the last when I was like oh Trump He's not going to be president. The Cheeto in chief. <laughs> the Cheeto in chief. I just like, it's like a joke we have with each other, y'all. Okay. Hey, everybody. We're smart and good. It's like, Shut up. you know, like your uncle or your aunt yes. on Facebook. We don't need to relitigate the Cheeto in chief joke. <laughs> I'm just saying it's, it, it, it amuses me on yes. a level. Ah, oh, cuckoo. cuckoo. It amuses me on a level that is downright cuckoo. <laughs> anyway, so, so. Because of this situation, um, you know, I thought maybe like we could try to get back east to see my mom who's alone during um, the pandemic. Because your mom's in South Carolina. Yeah. 
in Charleston, and there's no direct flight to Charleston until this in year. September, they announced one at the last minute, and Jet I was like, Blue. I'm buying that we, flight. Because, look, we've we've made this trip so many times, and it's one of those... <laughs> I made it more than you because... Of course. Yeah, yeah, I moved yeah. here at the end of 2001 in November 2001. But it's, that is an all-day trip, and... It's almost impossible not to get also, sick. Also, by the way, we've also gotten stuck overnight in cities. Yeah, 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 yeah. Before, That's happened a couple had times. To get up at five a.m. to yeah. get the fir- yeah. Absolutely. That that started that didn't used to happen, and then when it started happening, it kept happening. Where we kept missing well, connections. Because the weather, because the because yeah. of climate. Yeah. Because yeah, yeah. of climate change. Yeah. So anyway. So we were very excited. So that, I'm oh, like, there's I'm finally a direct flight. Let's do it. Direct flight because it's less exposure we can wear ppe and i know people have done you know essential whatever travel like i know how long ago did we book this flight in september when they announced it and i'm thinking certainly the we're gonna flatten this curve like that's what i'm thinking like we're in we're in this now like people are gonna be doing the things okay and then you know the reality is that it it's COVID hell. That's what one of the epidemiologists were in COVID hell. I mean, mm. it's like they and they even said and I was trying to like think, well, we can do this as a nation. But they even said like winter would be a surge. And I was like, no, everyone knows what to do. <laughs> And then, uh, <laughs> what a trusting little fawn. <laughs> and then, um, you know, it's like, please don't do non-essential travel. Yeah. Please don't, you know. And so the writing was on the wall and we had to, uh, cash in our t- tickets, um, to do that. But we waited a long time. We, we kind of, we I bought, was we planning to wait until like yeah. mid December. I was like mid December. And I'm like, who am I kidding? It's in, in mid People are going to gather for Thanksgiving. Yes. They're going to do it. Yeah. They're going to do stuff against the advice of the things. Mm-hmm. And they're going to travel and they're going to do it. And, you know, unfortunately, the weather is not conducive to more outdoor socializing, which is mm-hmm. a better way to do it. And by four weeks later, when Christmas happens, it's going to be worse. It's going to be worse. Yeah. So, yeah, we did wait a little while, but well, I thought we, we could wait longer. When but. we bought the tickets, we said... We'll see what happens, and we'll we there were fundable tickets, totally so fundable we'll of, we'll yeah. we'll cancel it if we have to, but let's let's like let it play out for as long as we can, and then kind of seeing the way things were going, it was now a, it, it was, was like a delusion, yeah, it was well, a delusion. I don't I don't know. I I I think it was the I think it was not delusional to to kind of roll the dice and see what happens, knowing that we could cancel the tickets, and. People had a chance to not, you know, but not also, take this seriously. They did, but also they did warn of colder temperatures. Yeah. They did warn of that. Yeah, yeah, You know? And, you know, we do live... But what I don't understand, because we are in Southern California, where it's not severe weather. Mm-hmm. Like, it's colder now, but it's not, like... It's not cold as everyone else knows cold. No, I can sit outside in the sun in the yard and talk to my neighbor six feet from me and it would be fine and not, you know. But they did say. (laughs) We don't talk to our neighbors, guys. (laughs) But I'm just saying they did say, they did warn of the winter being kind of a super spreading um, circumstance. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. Anyway, where was I going with this? Just that <laughs> sort of that um, we're kind of stuck at home for the yeah. holidays. And I bet a lot of people and a lot of listeners out there are also in the same situation are doing their risk assessment to figure out, you know, because another thing is like, it's not like we were going somewhere like empty. Yeah. Like we were going to be around my mom who's in her se- 70s. Yes. And... You know, we didn't have a month and a free place to stay for two weeks to corn, you know. Yeah. But even that, like they even say, like, you know, you could be asymptomatic and you could give it to someone, you mm-hmm. know. So you have to. Th- I don't know. It's such a th- it's clearly very contagious. It's clearly very <laughs> because like I I've just like there's anecdotal things like so and so got it and they ha- haven't left their house and 
You know, they only went to get, you know, supplies or something. And it's like, what the fuck? How does it happen? Well, here's it's crazy. The, most it's of the, crazy. Most of the anecdotal evidence that I've seen. Mm-hmm. And look, I'm not an epidemiologist. Although we have one that listens to us because he did respond to a question I had about the vaccine online. Oh, hi, doctor. <laughs> um, and I, I want to say thank you for your work the, and your the, response. The stories we keep seeing in the news, you know, online, whatever, is that it's weddings, it's family gatherings, it's, you know, b- 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 well, it's you know indoor, celebrations at the Rose Garden. Indoor dining and um, yeah. indoor gym. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Indoor it's that where gym. you are spending... a a significant amount of time around other people indoors Uh with no protection like that's ventilation yeah and no ventilation that that's where but let's see let's take ventilation out of it because let's assume that most places don't have the ventilation that is needed right in order for you to not get this fucking virus here's the thing is like the they say a lot of it's to indoor dining restaurants and i think one of the, one of the things with that when you're eating with people, you do have to take your mask off to do that. Yeah. You know. Yeah. So I there's no indoor dining here. We don't have indoor da- dining where we live. No, probably soon though. I don't know. No, it's they're gonna crazy. go. In, no, they're rolling back. I I freedoms. hope so. I hope so. They have to because Did you say they're the... rolling back the freedoms. Yes. <laughs> that sounds very sinister. <laughs> No, no, no. Good news. They're rolling back the freedoms. They're rolling back the freedoms. and <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's sort of, um, yeah, I think a lot of areas are, because LA is in the, re- you know how you look at those colored maps? Yeah. Like we're Love in like them. a darker red situation right mm. now, which, which kind of bothers me that you're going to work on money in a way, because back when we were less, high with numbers Mm -hmm. there was no production right yeah but that said i will give it up for adapting like we've adapted there's this testing and in place like you've had to test you know like you won't be allowed um in certain areas of the set like well i I worked on on a a set a couple weeks ago and you know when I, i took my mask when off for filming no one was allowed in that zone without a mask and a face shield right you know yeah it, same. It, it's yeah. like okay so hopefully and the fact that this production is still going on must mean they didn't have a spreading event i think so and that and they're on schedule too because yeah they didn't when have they a spreading event. this is this is my character returns for a brief moment in uh-huh. a, a, a later episode which we so, should tell the which list, they told me about listeners to look out for this show um i guess it's a new show yeah, I guess it's not a secret. Yeah, it's it's Rutherford Falls. Rutherford Falls stars Ed Helms. It's, it's not going to be, be on Peacock. It's going to be on Peacock. I don't think till January, maybe. But they've announced it in the trades. I've read about the show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it's yeah, a that's really true. funny. It's not, yeah, it's not a secret. It's not a secret I'm not show. like some superstar that it's like, please don't spoil it. But I don't know why. I guess because it hasn't come out yet. I feel like I I always wonder, am I allow- what am I allowed to say about these? Well, things? Well, I understand that, but on the other hand, I think. You're at the place now where you should be plugging the show, <laughs> like you know what I mean. Yes, I do. Because they're like deep into production now. It's like yeah, but they're not on yet. You know what I mean. Anyway, who cares? It's called Rutherford Falls. Well, you have to sign up for it's, fucking Peacock to see the thing. So. I I thought it was a really funny show. Which means uh, we have to sign up for Peacock. <laughs> I thought it was a really funny show. Uh, it was a great part for me. It was really fun to do. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I I come back. Uh, briefly for another episode, which they told me when they hired me for the original one. And so knowing that I'm going in, I trust this production and I'm also, it's just one scene. I'm going to be, I'm not going to be there that long. Yeah. I hope it, yeah. I hope it's safe. Yeah. I mean, we don't know. I I took my test today. They're going to test me again when I go there that morning. And you know, yeah. So it'll be, Oh, did you see Elon Musk has, (laughs) okay. So this is what I saw on the news. Okay. Not on the news, but on the, I guess, is Twitter the news? I don't know. Like, he tweeted. (laughs) So, I guess he tweeted this tweet that said, and I guess he's a little, like... An asshole? I was going to say, um, crazy? 
No, he's not crazy. It's he's not just an a asshole. No, it's not a mental illness. Oh, not I everybody who's like an said, asshole is mentally ill. No, but I thought he like says things that are maybe questionable. He's a jerk off. <laughs> I don't That's th- not in the DSM. <laughs> Here's the thing. I <laughs> I don't follow him much. Like I don't know his deal. Like yeah. I know who he is yes. by sheer force of living in America. Like the yes. same way that I know Kim Kardashian is somebody. Exactly. Do you know what I mean? Like I don't know their deal. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Um so all I know is pe- he's he's provocative. Like people have opinions about him. Oh yeah, both ways, both ways. And I also know that he's done some questionable things um, with his stock, uh, with his company for stock purpose. Anyway, whatever. Okay, so he tweeted something like, "I just took four COVID tests." Oh. Okay. <laughs> And two of them came back positive and two of them came back negative. Same lab, same day, same nurse. What is with these garbage tests? Now, I saw this tweet Mm -hmm. because someone had (laughs) retweeted it and was like, you know, you need to shut the fuck up. This is a really <laughs> irresponsible <laughs> um, thing to say. Yeah, given that he's the same guy who said, <laughs> this will go away. Okay, see, yeah, I he's even He's one missed, of those people. I even missed that. Yeah. So then I was like, what is this? And I start, like, looking through, because now I'm curious, because sure. I'm like, what is the test he's referring to? What is the, you know... Does he have COVID or doesn't he? You know what I'm saying? Right. Like, why did he test for whatever? So I'm like trying to read or follow this thought process that he's putting out in the, in the public. I mean, he's he's very public figure. Like he he's very public. I'm <laughs> just saying, like, there's a lot of people that oh comment. yes, oh no, he's <laughs> out there and people know. Wow. Okay. So anyway, <laughs> so uh, okay. So I'm reading it, and uh, and then there's like a subsequent tweet that's like, "Does anyone know the? I don't know. RNA went to whatever. <laughs> it sounds like a Star Trek script <laughs> to me. I'm like, what the blah blah blah. The over and under on the. This is from him. Yeah. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, it's in this like world that i don't understand right. where it's like well it's a 34 percent positive rate reduction mm. or whatever and i'm like dude do you have covid <laughs> <laughs> stop talking about things that are not about you having covid like like if i had two positive tests in one day i would be believing the positives over the negatives only because like huh you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, yeah, there might not be like a super 100 percent, you know, gold standard mm-hmm. to anything right now, because number one, this thing is not even a year old. Number two, you know, there's probably like, I don't know, like 150 tests. Like I listened to a podcast this summer about this organization that ordered all the antibodies tests. They tested like 50 different antibodies tests and created like a database and I had got like only three of them like produced reliable results mm-hmm. on this, on it. But that doesn't mean like he wasn't even doing antibodies. I don't think I think he was doing like live virus. Like, does he have the live? I don't know what he was doing. Do you know if he has COVID? <laughs> I do not know. I I've been busy since I found that out. <laughs> I had to go do other things. And so I wasn't able to check in. Uh, Obviously, I don't wish COVID on anyone. I just no, I, do think it would be not. very funny if he had it. All right. We do have to take a break. <laughs> Definitely have to take a break. Because we're 40 minutes in. And we have to share some words with from you. Our sponsors. From our beautiful sponsors. Usual Wines. We have a new sponsor, Blinkist. The Blinkist app. Thank you, Blinkist. Thank you, Blinkist. Thank so you, here's Usual. So here's a word from our sponsors, and we'll see you on the other side (laughs) thank you to usual wines for sponsoring the podcast thank you usual 
What is Usual Wines? Well, I'll tell you. Usual Wines is a delicious wine for the modern drinker. Each bottle is 6.3 ounces, which is a heavy pour, or about a glass and a half of wine. So, it's just the right amount where you don't feel like, oh, what am I going to do with this extra half a bottle of wine? I don't want to waste it. I don't want to drink it all by myself. What am I going to do? Don't worry about that anymore. Usual is here to save you. The wines are low carb. They have zero grams of sugar. They are made from world-class AVAs. That is the American viticultural area. I didn't think I have to tell you, but just in case, you never know who's listening. These are areas in California like Napa, Sonoma, and Santa Barbara and are made with minimal intervention, zero sugar, and zero additives. And Usual has a special holiday product coming early November, Usual Reserve. It is an ultra-premium limited edition Mount Vitor Cabernet Sauvignon. So, in addition to their red blend, their sparkling white called Brut, and their rosé, they have added Usual Reserve. Their most special wine yet, just in time for the holidays, hailing for one of the most celebrated plots of land in all of Napa, this Cab Sav is concentrated and rich with just enough grip. Gift it to someone special or keep it all for yourself. The holidays, as usual. Wink. Go to usualwines.com and use our discount code STAYFHOMEKINS for $8 off your first order. And try your first glass on us. That is usualwines.com. Discount code STAYFHOMEKINS for $8 off your first order. Remember when I said I had a social media addiction and I was doom scrolling all the time? Well, there's an incredible app that solves this problem and I highly recommend it. It's called Blinkist. Blinkist is really unique and it works on your phone, your tablet, or your web browser. Blinkist takes the best key takeaways, the need to know information from thousands of nonfiction books and condenses them down into just 15 minutes that you can read or listen to. I love using Blinkist when I'm on my phone and instead of just doing nothing, I want to better myself, but I don't have the attention span to absorb myself in a giant book. I never got around to reading a Steve Jobs memoir and I went to Blinkist and I was able to read it in just 15 minutes. I also recommend other great titles like Becoming by Michelle Obama, Why We Sleep by Matthew Walker. With Blinkist, you get unlimited access to read or listen to a massive library of condensed nonfiction books, all the books you want and all for one low price. Right now, for a limited time, Blinkist has a special offer just for our audience. Go to Blinkist.com slash Homekins. Try it for free for seven days and save 25% off your new subscription. That's Blinkist, B-L-I-N-K-I-S-T dot com slash homekins to start your seven day free trial and you'll also save 25 percent off but only when you sign up at blinkist.com slash homekins and we're back <laughs> jane's drinking a glass of water and then i jumped right back in <laughs> are you for real doing this right now i'm for real i for i honestly honey i forgot that it takes you longer to drink a glass of water <laughs> I'm so pissed. Don't be mad. Don't be mad. I love you. There she goes. She's doing it. Yes. First of all, <laughs> let me just say that was very unprofessional of you. <laughs> Second of all, guilty. Paul has like this superpower where he can drink a full glass of water and like. Five seconds. Like, literally, like, five. Like, it's like... No, this is not a superpower. Why isn't it? Beautiful Nico. You remember the water drinking exhibition. Yeah, yeah. The great New York water water drinking 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 exhibition. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. What about it? There are so many of us that can drink water quickly. (laughs) we're, We're among you. You have no idea. We walk among you. It's like... So annoying, <laughs> okay, that people can do that. I just, whatever. Let's talk about what I really want to talk about. Oh, here we go. Now, is this something you mentioned to me before or no? Is this a surprise to me? Did I mention anything to you before? Yeah, there were some things that we that came up that we talked about earlier before we started recording the podcast. Really? Like what? 
I don't remember having like the, like being bummed out about travel at the holidays. Oh yeah, yeah. But I'm I not saying like we planned out what we were going to talk about, but that <laughs> everything we talked about is something that I knew about already. <laughs> but now, th- th- now you're throwing me a curveball. Well, okay. Here's what I. What want. are you looking I'm at? Looking for, I'm looking something up specifically that I want to talk. Oh, about. I see. Okay. I want to talk about how savage. <laughs> The country music industry is. Oh, my God. Okay. To give folks a little background. <laughs> Janie's a huge country fan. I'm, uh, a, I'm a huge country fan. I'm a moderate country fan. But for some reason. Am I a huge country fan? I mean, I'm I a, think you are. I'm yeah. a huge country fan. Yeah, okay. Definitely compared to me, you are. You know way more artists and their work and everything. Mm-hmm. We started watching a handful <laughs> and of years ago. We talked about this on the podcast yes. before. A handful yeah. of years ago, we started watching the country, not just the country music awards, All but country any country music awards. awards that there are. Yeah, yeah. We even watched Reba's. Did she Christmas, do a Christmas special? Christian something or other. <laughs> <laughs> Finally, a Christian Christmas special. Um, and Reba we, hosts every single. By the way, Reba hosts every single one of these. I know, goddamn but this is shows. we're repeating because we did talk about this before. And last year, the CMAs, Reba walked out of a giant purple vagina, (laughs) which was like, honestly. Because it was the year of the woman for the CMAs. Yeah. 2019. Finally. (laughs) Finally. (laughs) They gave them one year. They gave them one year. Yeah, yeah. So, okay. So Reba, like, she has like 30 outfits for these things. Okay. Yes. And anyway, so they were honoring all these women of country music. Last year's CMAs was great. It was great, actually. This year's CMAs was not good, but COVID and every, but also we're yeah. going to get to that in a minute. But like, so anyway, she sang Bobby Gentry's Fancy mm-hmm. and she walked through this giant purple vagina, <laughs> had two, two on stage costume reveals. Yes. Where a co- whatever she was wearing was ripped away. She was wearing a different outfit underneath. It was like Magic underneath. Mike. It was like Magic Mike. <laughs> <laughs> it was like it was like it was like uh, but like twice. Like I'm talking like twice. Yeah. It was like yeah, the yeah, mystery yeah. of Irma Vep. It was like it was like. Oh, what a reference! It was like what a reference! It was like one door, the other door to another. Oh, like coming out in oh. wig, coming out in the. It was like it was amazing. My point was last year's team. That performance was like a Frasier. (laughs) (laughs) Look at it. Do you know what I think about? Do you know what I think about a lot? Is that that one (laughs) performance of? Is it what's the name of the song? Your good girls going bad. Yeah, the Tammy Wynette. Yes. Yeah. 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 Someone and they had. Yes, they have like a super group of of women. Oh, because they, they honored Tammy in the beginning. And like it was a all these different, all these different styles. It was awesome. Where uh, it was last like last year's Maze was good. It was great. Yeah. Anyway, and we love that we forget that Nicole Kidman is a part of it because she's married to Keith Urban. And so anytime, <laughs> dude, so, Nicole Kidman is the so, biggest country fan. It's so funny. Whenever they cut to the audience and she's <laughs> she there, it's like, oh, word. that's right. Like every she, like, time, knows every word, and she it. knows every word. Oh, that's Um, another thing about the CMAs or any of the country awards, I should say, is like all of the uh, artists are fans, which is what leading up to something we're about. to Yes, they all know everybody else's. Yeah, all the country artists are fans of the other artists. Yes. In like a fanatical way. Yeah. Like they cut to the audience and they know every like every single person is singing and dancing to the other person's mm. music. And I yeah. guess that happens at the Grammys fine, but like it's different. But the Grammys it's different is to me. more it's different. The, the Grammys is more widespread because it's different genres of music. But country is and it's, it's just one song genre of that's music. It's like the big hit song that everyone knows. Yes. Like everybody knows everybody's song at the country music awards. Yes, exactly. And it's not a bullshit thing. I would say I would say it's it's probably the same for any any other genre of the only other genre of music I can think of is hip hop that has an has its own award show. There's not What's like the name of their award show. I don't know. They used to do the Vibe Awards. I don't think they do that anymore. What's MTV Awards? Just like what's on the charts. Yeah, yeah. The MTV what's, Awards um, is like a Grammys type thing. 
Okay. It's whatever is popular. Okay. Yeah. But they don't have country on that. But there's not like a singer songwriters, you know, gr- award show. Here's you know the what thing I mean? about country music is there's drama. Someone's gonna tell me that there is. <laughs> They're going to tell you what? They're going to tell me that there is. There's a what? Well, there actually is a singer-songwriter's Grammy. It's an award show, and uh, it's this. That would be like the most like laid-back award show, though. Because the singer-songwriters are not... I love the singer-songwriters. I'm just saying that right. they're not bringing the heat when it You're comes saying to like, the performances. Uh, the Bonnie Prince Billy getting up there. <laughs> it's like, what? Like Mazzy Star? We're going to fall right. asleep or something? Mazzy Star! I don't know. That's a bad reference. It was like, but my point is this. So we watched this year's VMAs, which were not VMAs, CMAs, CMAs. Here's here's the which were you know uh, yeah. physically distant. They had they, it was at the Opry. Also, some people could not attend that show because they had tested positive. Dang, <laughs> Casey Musgrave, did she t- test positive? I don't know why she wasn't there. Maybe she was quarantining to be with family. Family's important. <laughs> I don't know. All I know is that. Um, I don't like all like CMA. Like, here's the thing about country music in general: is there's a lot of like kind of fluffy, garbagey stuff yeah. in there. I'm only watching for the nuggets. Like, there's like some nuggets in there, and like you have to kind of. And then I find enjoyment too from the com- overly commercialized stuff mm-hmm. because that amusing like it's sort of um over the top yes is what i should say yeah but that's not what i listen to on my like playlist rotation but right. i enjoy sort of the spectacle of it by the way janie has been building <laughs> oh, <yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> this playlist i'm so mad about my i'm not mad so about it mad i'm about not mad about it. It. no i think it's funny because you said it was the winston Churchill i said house. i said it was it's like this playlist is like the Winchester Mansion the Win- mystery mansion because you keep adding to it. It will never be over. Okay, the y'all. Winston Churchill house. Whatever. It was on election day. <laughs> when I say election day, I mean Saturday. Yes, yeah, Saturday, <laughs> Saturday which, which was truly election day. Saturday when they called Pennsylvania. And did not I say <laughs> Did not I say in conversation with friends before the election, I said, if Trump loses, yeah. there will be celebrations in the street. That's not a crazy prediction. That's not Nostradamus level. I'm not saying. Like, to me, that's like, yeah. That's Duh. fair. That's fair. I did not need to. Guys, Paul I, I predicted celebration in not, the street. And, and everyone Over, agreed. Uh, overthrowing a dictator, <laughs> apparently. And everyone agreed. I'm not. Uh, please, all, all apologies to Nostradamus. I'm not trying to bite your style. <laughs> so on Saturday, when they called Pennsylvania, and it was done. Because it's done. <laughs> okay? Yeah. Um, we We were... Like having our feelings about it, okay, mm-hmm. and the world, the world celebrated. It, we were put in believe. our feels. People and we have um, Trump supporters that listen to our show. By the way, well, and, that's and weird. <laughs> <laughs> well, it is a little weird because thanks for listening. <laughs> no, thanks for listening. Actually, listen closer. <laughs> what I think is great is that uh, is that um, they reached out and said mm-hmm. we don't agree on things and. Um, that's fine. Like, I just want to point out, though, when Trump lost on Saturday, the world <laughs> celebrated. This yeah. was not like, oh, the libs. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, you and your liberal <laughs> bubble or whatever. Yeah. It's It was like, you know, th- there's a relief among our allies. Okay. Mm hmm. And I don't know if you noticed, but the stock market <laughs> reacted to this. But now it's reacted to COVID, which is a much more serious thing. But hey, stock market, get it together. Anyway, my point is this. I started building this playlist because my friend was like, shared this playlist with me. And I was like, this is good. I'm going to make my own playlist. So I used some of those tracks on the playlist. You you were trying to build back better. <laughs> That's what I said. <laughs> I said, I'm building back better. And so I started. I'll take your half-assed playlist and make it a beautiful thing. <laughs> I started adding all these tracks. 
Why did you mention the playlist? I was going to talk about country music. Yes, let's talk about country. We don't have to talk about the playlist the anymore. Playlist, so the playlist is called Election Day. and It's a good playlist. You have to be on Apple Music, unfortunately, probably, to, for me to share it with you. Because that's my Sorry, subscription. Everyone. That's her subscription service. But you can maybe look at the playlist and and uh, replicate it on your sure. Spotify or your Absolutely. Kindle or whatever. Anyway, my point is this. And also, maybe you'll hate the fucking playlist. <laughs> <laughs> There's also that. <laughs> so, we, so we're getting down into our country. So we watched the CMA Awards. Okay. Yes. And... You know, it had its moments. Yeah, I mean, they... They honored Charlie Pride. I mean, like... That was very touching. It, Charlie Pride, which he, I didn't realize was still alive. Oh, man. And they gave him a Lifetime Achievement Award, and he sang, and... He also uh, just, like, was the most real... Yeah. Movie. Like, his his reaction and his speech and response was so... He gave a really heartfelt speech, and he's like, I, I'm nervous, and, you know, it, it, was, it, it was, was really human and really... Lovely. Yeah. And ugh, fucking Darius and Reba sang in the ghetto. I mean, I, I thought that was like beautiful when they sang in the ghetto. It, they did a great job. They did yeah. a great job. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, it had its moments. Um, Maren Morris won a million awards and I'm a big fan of hers. And then she pointed out like, see me so white. Mm hmm. She, you know, she was like. Listen, you know, you should be listening to these black artists that because it is very. So here's the thing about country music that I was going to point out is that because last year they had the year of the woman this year, they're trying to be more you know inclusive, I guess. Yeah. And they did talk a lot about Black Lives Matter and George Floyd and stuff yes, like that. Especially and, in the pre-show, you know, too. Yes. And, well, and Maren Morris wrote a fucking song about it. Yeah. But like um, the thing is that. It's still very male, mm -hmm. white, commercial, and patriarchal, even if you're a woman in yes. the country music yeah. industry. Yeah. Okay. So that's fine. That is what it is. I mean, it basically reflects, you know, power structure in, Amer in America. And yeah. And, and, there, and I think there is, like, this movement to try to evolve mm -hmm. and maybe i'm wrong i don't know that's just what i well, glom on to i think that there is and here's the thing is that i think that it's the same it's the same problem in any genre of popular music mm -hmm. they're all it's it's it, it cannot help but be um ha well i shouldn't say it cannot help but be because people are trying to change it it has existed for so long yeah all genres of music as uh, male dominated and this is the way that it is and female insurgents. The country thing, of course, is is way more white than um, a lot of other genres of music yes. uh, have been over the years. Um, but I, I it's interesting to watch specifically with country music because we watch these <laughs> award shows so much <laughs> that you do get a feeling of you do get a sense of. The, the the people that are the insurgents, the people that are the new blood of this genre. But at the same time, there's like, we listen to this. We got to talk bro, about. It's the bro country. It's the bro we country We got to talk dominate. about, I wish grandpas would never die. Okay, so, okay. So our, <laughs> our friend Phil is a country music fan also. Big time. And he sent us this song, I wish grandpas would never die. <laughs> and I'm like obsessed with it on a, on a lot of levels because... Number one, it's the plot of Pet Cemetery. <laughs> okay. There's no way around that. Like, it is the plot of Pet Cemetery. If you wish your relatives <laughs> would never die, we're talking because they have died. Stephen King. Yes. Territory. Yes. This is not like looking at your living grandpa <laughs> and saying, I wish you would never die. This is your grandpa has died. <laughs> I don't know what it is, but <laughs> my point is the song is so bad it's good. Like, it's a country list song. 
it's a con- it is a list, right? Yeah. It's a list of things he wishes, and yes. everything he wishes is like super, like. Juvenile. I wish honky tonks didn't have a closing time. I wish he wishes that cars also had truck beds. <laughs> okay. <laughs> he wishes. That's, that's such a weird wish. Guess that's what? Such a weird wish. Guess what? Get an El Camino. I know, but get why? an El Camino. Why? Get an El Camino. Of all the wishes that he makes in the song, <laughs> he does. He <laughs> wants all cars to have truck beds. Which is weird, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Here's the worst exactly. wish. Why do you care? Yeah, how many cars are you going to own? Why do you want other... You just other, want other cars that you see to have what? truck beds? Get a truck. <laughs> yeah, of a course. Truck. Trucks, trucks already exist. Stick with the truck. Trucks already exist. Stick with the truck. But he's like, I don't even... I don't even want to see a car without a truck bed. Another thing he wishes, which really bothers me <laughs> and feels uncountry. Mm-hmm. Is that coolers would never run out of Bud Light. Bud Light. Because Bud Light, I drink Bud. I mean, I don't know about y'all out there. If you're gonna if you're gonna fucking Maybe drink, you bud, don't drink. drink bud. Maybe you don't drink beer. Maybe you don't whatever. But here's what I'm gonna tell you about it. Bud Light is not it's not there it's are... just not real. It's not it's not country. There are so many beers. Okay? There are so it's many not, beers. Bud Light is not country. Like, Bud Light yeah. is like. And it fits a rhyme, but I feel like <laughs> you could have taken a second pass and you could have come up with something else. This is not it, Chief. Also, can I just say. Are people still saying that? You're, you're cooler. <laughs> that ain't it, Chief. I'm bringing it back. If you're cool, like, buy more Bud Light because it costs not much. Like, it's cheap. Yeah. So your cooler doesn't have to run out of Bud Light. Bud Light's you know what not I'm gold. Yeah. Anyway, the caviar of beers, my Bud point Light. Is, so, okay, so this country, so that's not part of the sea maze, y'all. That's just a side. That's just a side fun an, an, antidote, anecdote, <laughs> anecdote, hmm. anecdote. A little diversion. <laughs> a little diversion. All right. I guess our, our retelling of the song is anecdotal. <laughs> <laughs> so where we're, you you can't prove it until you listen to the song. Which is the plot we, of pet. like like you are you're just taking our word it for it at this point. Pets. All right, so we were watching the sea maze, whatever. It's not amazing because already it's COVID mm-hmm. treated uh, award show, mm-hmm. so it's not you know it's a hot mess mm-hmm. a little bit. Don't you think? It wasn't that bad. It wasn't that bad. It was mostly you saw the seams when people were introducing things. Uh-huh. I don't know why that was so much different than it normally would be, but they were having a hard time they were awkward just and... saying, and now here's this. Okay, so then the ne- so then the next day we see on our Twitter that the Twitter we share. <laughs> we're like one of those weird couples that shares an email. Why? We share one Twitter Why account. Why is that? <laughs> Why is that? Why is that? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> do, okay, so then we see on Jason Isbell's Twitter, due to country music's failure to mention John Prine, who do, who passed this so of coronavirus, like yeah, one of the fr- yeah, do, uh, who, failure to mention John Prine, Jerry Jeff Walker, and Billy Joe Shaver at the CMAs last night. These are all country greats that passed this year. Yes, Amanda Shires and I have decided to return our membership cards. I doubt anybody will care, but we cared a lot about our heroes. And I was like, damn, mm-hmm. only because like I didn't notice the lack of um. In memoriam at the time because I wasn't watching it as yeah. a critical watcher. Like I was having a two screen experience mm-hmm. and, you know, like I'm not in that world. I'm not, you know, but I, I mean, I do remember the passing of these people this year. And, yeah, and um, absolutely. But there was no in memoriam. I will say this. There was no in memoriam. I'm not defending the CMAs at all. Um, Cause also remember, this is the group that <laughs> got mad at the Dixie chicks. <laughs> Yeah. That are now the chicks. Yeah. But I'm just saying, like, 
There's a lot that they do that's wrong. Absolutely. And these, and these artists were not controversial, and they they deserved a mention. I mean, they did a tribute to well, Charlie Daniels. In my personal you know I mean? opinion, I think it was more of an oversight than a statement. Don't you? Yeah, but I think that I don't. Yeah, I don't think. Well, I can't say. I can't say that it was a statement. I I I would definitely agree that it was an oversight. I think that it was, but it's. Also, we're it's living shameful. through coronavirus. Yeah, so it's why shameful. wouldn't you be thinking? They had when they were pl- when they're planning tributes to other people that are dead. Yeah, you would think they would say <laughs> if you're planning an- look. Here's the thing: if you are planning an award show, well, the dead people the are tribute. absolutely part of it. You absolutely have to look back at your organization yeah. and say who from our thing has died this year. Okay, so, but then I saw, so then I was like, okay, you know, they're in the industry, they feel strongly about this, like, I get it, and then I saw today that Sturgill Simpson said, don't get it twisted, wouldn't be caught dead at this tacky-ass glitter and Botox cake and cock (laughs) pony (laughs) show, (laughs) even if my chair had a morphine drip, I just... (laughs) I just wanted to see if they'd say his name, but nope. And um, dang, because um, you know, because John Prine is like he's like he's an icon. He's, really. a, he's, he's absolutely like a, an icon. He's like an American, absolutely an American legend. Of course, of course. Well, the, but then I guess like Margot Price joined in, mm-hmm. and this is serious shade. Who is that again? She you knows she sings that one about selling the farm and buying the farm. Okay, so anyway, so then Margot Price comes in and says, anyone still participating is a socially unconscious pawn. Artists pander woke authenticity when it benefits them and then sit in silence as they collect their plastic trophies. (laughs) Also, the music sucks. Oh, damn! (laughs) Okay. Margot Price taking no prisoners. So, which to me had nothing necessarily to do with, like, neglecting to honor. (laughs) Right. (laughs) But I think Roseanne Cash also says something. Oh, yeah? What'd she say? Uh, Well, let me look it up. I I don't, like, I understand being upset about the sort of bland commercialization of this genre that you work hard to really express yourself honestly in and maybe don't get right but like welcome to art okay because (laughs) you know hey welcome to art everybody but i'm just saying but like to say the music sucks i think is taking it a step like all of the music like right like all of it like, I, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? Like, I yes. thought there were some decent performances. Like, I don't like all of the songs. Like, you know, I'm not like some little big town fanatic. <laughs> little, little big town is. But they're solid, man. Absolutely a they're group that I. beautiful vocals. Uh, sure. I've never, I've never heard. They did a tribute to Kenny Rogers, I thought was. Yes, they sweet. sang his song. His sweet Music Man. It the sweet Music sweet Man? Sweet Music yeah. Man. I've never heard Little Big Town outside of a country <laughs> music awards. awards they're on show. Ev- and by the way, they're on like every award show. They win like all the awards. Yeah. And I still have no like deep understanding of what their relationships are to one another. Are mm-hmm. they married? Are they related? Are they just friends? Like, I don't know. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> like, but I kind of like that they're grown ups, and I like that they're very professional and very tight when they perform. Like, there's a super tightness to their performances that makes me think like this. They're an act that has it together. Like, if I were a manager, and thank God I'm not, because that would be such a <laughs> hard job. But like, if I were a manager and they were my act that I was managing, I would be so proud of them all the time because they always like come off like very tight. Do you know what I mean? Yes. Roseanne Cash okay, did not issue her own statement. Oh, she but did not. Someone responded to Jason Isbell, the Madison arm. Uh, it's a songwriter. Um, said, but Roseanne, oh, she retweeted it. 
She retweeted Jason yes. Isbell's tweet. Okay. And then, uh, well, because of, I mean, it is like they did neglect mentioning those three artists that passed. Oh, no, she did. I'm sorry. She did have a reply. Okay. Also, no mention of Jan Howard, 50 year member of the Opry, who made dozens of albums, had a number one single with Evil on Your Mind, and was a Grammy nominee. She died in March at the age of 91. Jesus Christ. Shortly after making her last Opry appearance at the age of 90, a lifelong friend. Jesus Christ. Okay. Then, then this person in the Madison Arm said. Up. But Roseanne, how many of those? How many of her songs mentioned red solo cups? I mean, let's be real here. Well, yeah. <laughs> and Roseanne Cash big... replied seriously. Yeah, because because yeah. the here's the thing about the CMAs and this country music phenomenon of like radio ass country, which I don't even listen to that stuff. I seek out, di- you know, yes. various artists, but I do enjoy a cheesy award show. Like, sure, for yeah. lots of reasons, but um. Like it, there is a frustration in country music. I think a double cuckoo one. Yeah, honey, we've been talking for a while. <laughs> Am I supposed to feel a certain way about that? Am I feel you, bad? You seem surprised <laughs> that it was a double cuckoo. We just took that long break because we had to. We had to communicate with our group of friends about this drive. It's true. Through. We were making we were making, we're making plans, plans for a for a a, a, a true caravan <laughs> drive through holiday. <laughs> anyway, I'm just saying, like, I'm not in country music. I love country music as an observer, as an outside observer. There's drama there. Yeah, and uh, and I kind of love it. It's like loving the band Fleetwood Mac, mm-hmm. you know, because like. There's drama there. You know what I mean? Like, you get into this, like, music. Like, the thing about, like, musicians and their relationships and stuff. Like, you watch, like, these music documentaries or whatever. And it's so fucking deep. Mm -hmm. And it gets, like, crazy deep. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And personal. Don't you think? I remember talking with uh, my friend Scott Carter a while ago. We were talking about the mamas and the papas. And it, there's a thing that happens in bands that are made up of multiple people. Mm-hmm. And then when they're couples, too, uh-huh. that the, <laughs> there's like a thing. It's like, look, everything is going great. All you have to do is <laughs> these two people don't fuck each other. That's it. <laughs> and then we'll have a great life. They Everything were, will be great. And by the way, they were only together for like two years yeah. or something yeah. like that. Because, well, first of all, that guy, that one guy is fucking bananas. Lindsey Buckingham? Or are oh, you no. talking about the mamas and the papas? Yeah. Oh, pa- Papa John? Yeah. He's absolutely. Maybe a psychopath. Yes. Maybe a possible psychopath. Yes, yes, yes. Like a criminal. <laughs> yeah. Like a malignant narcissist. He's a Malnar. Mal- Malnark. Malnark. They say narc. You say narc for narcissists? They say narc, yeah. I didn't realize he's a male narc. Um, yeah, that guy, I don't think anyone could have been in a band with him for much for long. And also, like, he did not treat the female members of the band very well. Well, there's <laughs> two sides to every story. <laughs> right, we should, we I should wrap saying, it up. I'm just saying, like... It, I I think I recommended on on and we can segue now into recommendations. Yes. But I recommended on a previous podcast. There was that um, I can't even remember where I found it. Uh, the Laurel Canyon documentary. Yes, absolutely. And they talk about sort of some of that drama. Yeah. In the mom in specifically the mamas and the papas, but also just any band documentary in general, mm-hmm. like I will get into, mm-hmm. I watched some documentary. It was, um, who is the guy and who's the lead singer of the band? Robbie Robertson. Yeah. Yeah. So there is on Hulu, this great documentary about sort of the trajectory of that, of those relationships. Yeah. And, it was like so intense and sad and what a great band they were though. Yeah. They were like such a good band. Uh, the last waltz I think is streaming now. And if you haven't seen it, you should see it. So we really were looking amazing. for Thanksgiving movies and yeah. um, last waltz was listed because I guess they did film that on Thanksgiving day. <laughs> yeah. I haven't seen last waltz since 
like the I haven't 90s. seen it forever. Yeah, we should watch it. I would watch we it. We should if, watch you it. You know, and like Scorsese. Well, and then Scorsese d- also directed the Robbie Robertson one on mm-hmm. Hulu, which which is really good. And that's one of my recommendations. At the very least, you got to see super drunk Van Morrison on The Last Waltz. Oh, that would be... I forgot that he... Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And it's still great somehow. <laughs> but he's... Well, he's hammered. a good performer. Look, I mean, he's a good performer. <laughs> um, speaking of drunk um, artists, like sad documentaries, a while back, I watched the Harry Nilsson oh, yeah. documentary. Oh. And I was so devastated by this man's demons yeah his like, story's really sad sad yeah well because he had like a family and he but also here's what bothered me about him is he seemed to be very tormented by having this singing talent yeah and he tried to ruin his own yes. singing voice yeah. like on purpose yeah. like he tried to destroy his own vocal cords and it, it was like he was tortured yeah by this app that is a that is truly a tortured soul and like this guy like can sing like so good it was so crazy yeah i think i recommended last time i said to watch 537 votes on hbo about the uh gore bush yes so that's not a new recommendation so i guess i fucked up <laughs> well, look i fucked up <laughs> I fucked up. Hey, baby, don't take it so I don't hard. write it down. I don't write it down. Know, I'm not very I organic. I know. This was also a weird week. I don't think we were discovering a lot of new things this week. Um, I don't I don't really have a big recommendation either. I have oh, some you plugs, don't. but oh, you plugs? I would say The Mandalorian plugs. season two, I just started watching. I didn't realize uh, you like Baby Yoda and he did turn one the other day. Man, babe. <sighs> <laughs> Disney Plus came out like a year ago. <laughs> He's still adorable. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. And um yeah, I watched the first two episodes. It's true. Another one comes out and tonight. We talked about this on the last episode too. We did talk about Baby Yoda. Did we really? Yes, yes. Well, he's never far from our hearts. Because he said he said there'd be cute baby Jar Jar, and then people sent us the pictures of baby Jar Jar. Oh, that's right. Okay. What well, basically guys, thirty five episodes. Has taxed us. <laughs> <laughs> we need a writer's room. A we need writer's a writer's room. room. <laughs> I think we're okay. I think we're okay. Next week, we'll be back on track. You think? Yeah, I think so. I don't know. I think so. Next Absolutely. week, <laughs> I'll probably be more depressed. Uh, I just want to plug uh, the Saturday after Thanksgiving. Hold on a second. No, I should, I should make sure to plug. We are streaming the Thrilling Adventure Hour um, concert film uh, that we did in 2013, um, and that's going to be streaming online. Oh, I wish I knew the date off the top of my head. Uh, I will post it. How about that? Uh, well, also, don't you have a website where people can visit all yeah, of your Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Okay, That's yeah. what I'm saying. Are you going to post it where? So, uh, pauloftompkins.com slash live. There you go. So, it'll be up there. And then um, the Saturday after Thanksgiving, we'll be doing a Cocktails with the Cast with the Thrilling Adventure Hour gang, uh, where we're just going to be, like, all together online, um, hanging out. And we welcome you to join us for uh, questions, statements, whatever you want, Um it's just going to be very loose and very silly. And if you've ever seen us interact this way off stage before on any of these events, you know exactly what it's going to be like. So I would encourage you to uh, check that out. And then Lauren Lapkus and I will be back doing our two person improv show yes. uh, December 7th, a date that will live in comedy. Uh, <laughs> we are doing Lapkus and Tompkins present Christmas in December. Courtesy of DynastyTypewriter.com. All of these ticket links are available at PaulFTompkins.com slash live. Well, guys, here we go into our long, dark winter. <laughs> hitting what the- a sign off! <laughs> We're hitting, <laughs> the- hitting this holiday hitting the hitting this holiday season. We might be hitting the ground lying down. <laughs> might be a different one. Than we're used to. 2020 is a wash, right? Just yeah. 
guys. But look, it's just a wash. Here's the thing. It's a fucking wash. We we pull together with the people that we know. You do what you can. Reach out if you're alone. Yeah. You feel sad. Reach out to people that you know. Don't you know? Don't get down. Yeah. If you're worried about someone, reach out to them. I mean, you can get down. What I'm saying is, don't be down yes. alone. Holidays. The holidays are alone. Can be a lonely time and. If you are feeling alone uh, and you have the strength to reach out, please do that. And if you know someone who may be alone, reach out to that person. Um, you know, I think that we have to pull together as much as we possibly can. Be aware is my point. Be aware. Yeah. Be very self-aware. And I think if, if the if the last four years have taught us anything, it's the stark difference between uh, giving a shit about other people and not giving a shit about and other people. And also recognizing that there are resources within yourself that you can access and you've gotten by this far. This is, I'm talk. this is like what I talk about in therapy. <laughs> so <laughs> this is what I've heard from pe- someone that has a degree. Yeah. Is that, you know, you've, you've survived this far. So therefore you have developed the skills and the resources within yourself to, you know, persevere. And you may be you may be tougher sturdy, than you know. There's self sturdiness there. Yes, I don't have it right now. Well, you may be. I think that we all may be tougher than we think that we are. Um, anyway, and let's every, not get too modeling. Yeah, yeah. Um, thank you for no. I'm I'm saying no. I'm saying I'm not saying that it was. I'm saying let's not. <laughs> thank you for don't listening. Don't watch the Harry Nelson documentary. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're also going to start doing anti recommendations. <laughs> Uh, we're gonna do reg- the, we're gonna do recommendations we're gonna do warnings the fuck out yes exactly also uh one more recommendation because this is making me think of it oh okay the linda ronsat documentary oh absolutely awesome. if you haven't seen it see it it's out there it's she's amazing she's amazing. a literal angel from heaven yeah um all right thank you all for listening we really appreciate it um we are stay of homekins on uh twitter and uh instagram uh, stay of homekins at gmail.com if you want to email us we really 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 love that anyone listens to this podcast thank you so we much we also have official merch at www.kinshipgoods.com that's right and I was just informed today that those weekend water mugs have been restocked and in a new color in a new color yeah and so have the um, I think the y'all shirts the y'all shirts are- Shirts. Sweatshirts have been restocked. Yes. So if you were looking to buy some of our merch and it was sold out, go shopping on that site. Yes. Thank you to Kinship Goods. Um, we will be back next week and I guess for many weeks after. Until then, stay, stay safe, safe, stay, stay sane, sane, and stay.